In this video, you'll see how to set up an Amazon Aurora Zero ETL integration with Amazon Redshift that includes data filtering. With this integration, you get an easy and reliable solution for running near real-time analytics and machine learning on petabytes of transactional data with no complex ETL infrastructure to maintain. You can also define the replication scope using data filtering. This might save costs when performing analytics on fewer tables and makes it possible to exclude tables with sensitive personal information. This is the Amazon Relational Database Service Console, where we'll create a zero ETL integration. Before we begin, let's look at the source database we'll be using. Our source is an Aurora PostgreSQL database cluster. Now let's navigate to the zero ETL integrations page. This page describes the three steps required to create a zero ETL integration. For demonstration purposes, the source database and target data warehouse have already been prepared, and we're now on step three. Let's create a zero ETL integration. First, we'll give the integration a name. Next, we'll select our source database. RDS automatically filters to supported engine versions. RDS validates the parameter settings for the database cluster. In this case, the parameter values need to be fixed. We'll have RDS fix them for us. Under Data Filtering Options, we can include or exclude any existing and future database tables based on a comma-separated list of filter expressions. For this example, we'll include three databases and schemas that are already loaded with data. To allow RDS to make the parameter changes and reboot our database, we'll enter Confirm. Let's reboot and continue. RDS is now fixing the parameter values. While the parameter values are being fixed, let's select our target Amazon Redshift data warehouse. For this example, we'll use a target data warehouse in the current account. Our data warehouse does not have the correct resource policy and case sensitivity parameter to support zero ETL integration. We'll have RDS fix this for us. Let's review the changes that will be applied to our target data warehouse and continue. RDS is now making the fixes. We can view the status details from the top of the page. Continuing with the integration setup, we have the option to add tags and customize the encryption settings. We'll skip this step. Once the source database and target data warehouse are fixed, we can review the settings and create the integration. Let's skip ahead to when they are successfully fixed. Let's create the zero ETL integration. It can take up to 30 minutes to create the integration. Let's fast forward to when it has been successfully created. Our ETL status is now active. Now let's switch to Amazon Redshift and create the database integration. Now we are in our Amazon Redshift console. Let's navigate to the zero ETL integration we just created. We'll create a database from the integration. We'll select the source named database we specified when creating the integration. Next, we'll name and create the destination database. At the bottom of the page, we can view Amazon CloudWatch integration metrics and table statistics that show whether data is getting synced from the source to Amazon Redshift. Metrics will start populating as soon as data starts flowing. In addition, we can view the table statistics to see which tables have synced and which ones have failed. We can select a failed table to see why it couldn't sync into Amazon Redshift. This table is missing a primary key. This table is using an unsupported table type, which is a partition table. Let's skip ahead to when the database has been created from the integration and some metrics have filled in. We now have metrics for lag tables replicated successfully, and tables failed.
On the Table Statistics tab, we can view each table's status, workload, row count, and size. When we created the integration, we specified three databases in the data filtering options. So far, we've created one database in the Amazon Redshift console. We'll now use Amazon Redshift Query Editor V2 to create the other two databases from the integration. We'll obtain the integration ID from the system table and use it to create a new database from the integration. Now let's refresh the database explorer. Two databases now appear in the pane. The second database should also appear in our table statistics. Let's go back and look. As expected, we can see the tables in the second database we created in Amazon Redshift, along with their schema names and sync status. Now we'll create the third target database. This time we'll also set a refresh interval to delay the sync of data from our source Aurora PostgreSQL cluster. We can set the interval anywhere from 0 seconds to 5 days. Let's set the refresh interval to 7,200 seconds. Now that the database is created, let's confirm the database has been added to the system table with the refresh interval we specified. As expected, the refresh interval of the third database is 7,200 seconds. Next, let's change the refresh interval for this database to 600 seconds. We'll use the filter to select the database we want to update. Now we'll run the alter command. The refresh interval for the third database is now 600 seconds. Now let's confirm the change was added to the system table. The refresh interval has been successfully updated. You've just seen how to set up Amazon Aurora Zero ETL integration with Amazon Redshift. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.